have absolutely been loving season three of Rick and Morty so far. We are only four episodes in, but the episodes have been filled with memorable moments, characters, and loads of hilarious jokes. But the thing that really sets Rick and Morty apart from other shows is the depth and layers that the writers write into each show and each joke. You could watch an episode four times and still not every, get every joke or reference that the writers hide in the script. Luckily, that's where I come in. Today, well, I want to go over 10 things that I picked up on after watching and rewatching season three so far. Now, keep in mind that most likely I missed out on hundreds of little things and references that you guys may have picked up on or maybe somewhere else on the internet. So drop a comment down there if something I didn't mention you know, caught your eye in one of the episodes and let me know what you guys came across in these. Also, keep in mind, this is only going over the first four episodes because that's all that's been out, but I will be doing future videos covering the rest of season three and possibly going back and doing one in season one and two. But with that out of the way, guys, let's jump right in with number one. In episode one, when Morty and Summer dig up the dead Rick in the backyard to get his portal gun, Morty says they can pretend it just never happened, just like when they found Dad's mannequin leg. Summer, nobody has to know about that. We can put it right back and pretend we never saw it, like we did with Dad's mannequin leg. Fine, stay here. I'll rescue Grandma. This is a joke poking fun at the, one of the co-creators of the show, Dan Harmon, who actually has a mannequin leg in real life that he carries around and has been known to do a little bit of weird things with as he does it for a gag for him and his friends. Number two is also in episode one during Rick's epic rant about his Mulan Szechuan McNugget sauce. He tells Morty that the sauce is his overarching goal in his quote, one-armed man. Szechuan teriyaki dipping sauce, Morty. Uh, because that's, that's what this is all about, Morty. Uh, that's my one-armed man. I'm not driven by avenging my dead family, Morty. That was fake. I, I'm driven by finding that McNugget sauce. Nuggets. I want that Mulan McNugget sauce, Morty. That's my series arc, Morty. If it takes nine seasons, the one-armed man reference comes from the 1960s TV series, The Fugitive, where Harrison Ford's character was wrongly accused of murdering his wife and he must find the one-armed man who actually did it, and he will stop at nothing to find him. Number three is one of my favorite jokes in episode one, and it's actually super missable if you aren't looking for it. While in the show notes, we get to see some of Rick's memories. We see his wife in Beth by a portal, we see his favorite sports whooper where a guy gets hit in the nuts, and finally we see Rick's memory of where he was on 9-11. And if you listen closely, you can actually hear what Rick is saying. Fine, but I'm driving. I absolutely love this part when Rick was smart enough to see right through it. He actually says, quote, God almighty, it's an excuse to take away our freedoms. Pretty sneaky stuff there. Pretty funny. Number four, in episode two of the season three, Rick makes a joke about E.B. White. Hey, you guys ever use that Thunderdome or do you just put it up for decoration? Uh, you mean the blood dome? Save it for the semantics dome, E.B. White. Ooh, burn. I actually had to Google who E.B. White was, and apparently I wasn't the only one. I mean, just look at this search data before and after the episode aired. That's absolutely insane. Anyway, E.B. White turns out was an American author who also was a contributor for the New York Magazine and was a co-author of the English Language Style Guide. Plus, he also wrote the children's book Charlotte's Web, so that's pretty cool. Number five, later in episode two, when Summer and Hemorrhage were hunting people in the wastelands, we got to see all kinds of cool, funny stuff. If you actually slow down the frames, you can see that many of the mutant people are wearing shirts with pop culture references on them. Pretty cool here. I love the Atari one. There's other ones like that. Pretty cool. And you may have something you may have overlooked or just didn't catch the first time watching. Number six is also in episode two when Rick mentions getting trichinosis. Hello being united we love the radiation the trichinosis we're in it for life which i assume is around 20 years average this disease actually fits perfectly in the scene because trichinosis is an infection caused by a roundworm that people usually get from eating raw or undercooked contaminated meat this is a perfect joke for the world they are in i mean they're eating barbecued human beings or other random meats it could totally happen to be contaminated or undercooked makes perfect sense and i love when they put lines like this in the show adds another layer of depth like i said stuff you may not know look up but it's absolutely hilarious when you find it out speaking of crazy creepy diseases you probably never knew about number seven is another one of them in episode three we discovered that mr goldenfold actually eats poop oh the slip family mine is the dead how long have you all been eating poop we have never eaten poop I mean, me neither. And while him eating poop is funny by itself, the writers added yet another layer of it to the gag by putting this sign on the therapist's door. It says, Caprophagia Recovery. 
Caprophagia is actually a disease that makes people want to eat poop, so it makes sense why Mr. Goldenfold is at the office. Number eight. In episode four, we can see this weird character in the background who's kind of translucent. You can kind of see through him. And if you pause, you can actually see the things that are inside of him. Well, right here is clearly a plumbus, which is a throwback to one of the interdimensional space cable episodes where they do like the thing where like just a regular old plumbus and how it's made joke. That's pretty cool. So it's pretty cool to see a little reference to that hidden in this episode as well. Number nine is later in episode four when we see Rick's pre-recorded saw type message where he appears to be in a garage making the props for the game they made everyone play the saw thing he was doing. But anyway, if you freeze frame, you can see what appears to be some sort of weapon in the top left corner. Come to find out, it is identical to the arm cannon device that we see Rick use in the Season 3 trailer. Now, we have not gotten to see the episode that he uses this yet, but I'm sure we will in a future episode get him, see him use this. This could be some kind of foreshadowing for that episode or something like that. We'll have to wait and see about that, but it's definitely the same canon. And finally, also in Episode 4, Rick mentions how he defeats Goo Gaws more powerful than the Vindicators. Comfort. Rick, this really bums me out. It, it's embarrassing to find out these guys don't like us. Why? Morty, I uh, defeat Gagu's more powerful than these guys every week. Yeah, but not heroes. Oh, please. They just call themselves heroes so they can- I'm calling them- Goo is actually a reference back to a short film that the co-creator Justin Roiland made called Goo Gaz. It's about aliens that kill people from inside. The film is actually available to watch on YouTube, and it's actually pretty funny, so you may want to check it out. Justin Roiland and his crew actually have tons of these like skits and stuff like that that they did prior to making Rick and Morty and they're all available on YouTube. They're on Justin TV. Pretty cool stuff like that. I really enjoyed them. But anyway guys, that's all I have for time for today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, please do me a favor and hit that like button and subscribe for more Rick and Morty content in your sub boxes daily. Check out some of my previous Rick and Morty theories. Done a whole playlist full of them. Links to that in the end slate and the description. And before I get out of here, I wanted to ask you guys for one piece of help. While doing research for this video, I came across what I thought was going to be another one of these hidden layered jokes, and I just couldn't figure out what they were referencing. In one of the episodes of season three, I can't remember which one off the top of my head, Rick makes a joke about someone being Professor Ski Lodge. He's like, thanks, Professor Ski Lodge. Listen, Rick, Summer's been acting pretty crazy lately, you know? I mean, I think the divorce is affecting her, and, you know, I don't think this is a great place for her to be right now. Oh, get off your high horse, Professor Ski Lodge. This world may be rough around the edges, but it's got its charm. I couldn't figure out what the hell Professor Ski Lodge is. I looked it up online. Some people seem to think it was a reference to some kind of TV show, but they couldn't figure it out which one it was, and I couldn't find a whole lot of information on it. So if you guys have any information on what Professor Ski Lodge is, or what the hell he's talking about, or if Rick's just making something up because Rick's spontaneous and likes to make up things that don't make any sense sometimes, please let me know down in the comment section. That actually was driving me crazy for not being able to figure out any information about that. Um, so hopefully you guys know something more than I do, and hopefully you guys can figure that one out and we can solve this. Also, be sure, like I said, to subscribe. I'm making more of these videos. I plan on doing, you know, more references because season three is only four episodes deep right now and there's another 10 to go. So I'm sure there'll be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of more references uh, that will be in these new episodes. And I'll look back at other episodes and past episodes as well for future episodes of this. So let me know if you guys have something you guys would be interested in seeing. But like I said, guys, that's all I had time for today. Until next time, remember that it's always came back time somewhere, guys. Till then, take it easy and peace out sorry guys one last thing this was driving me crazy right before i finished this video i went back and rewatched the clip and i was starting to think why why did this make sense what happened here well check out this clip and then in the comments down below go ahead and tell me where you think hemorrhage's character which is the guy with the, the no pants on there tell me where you think he pulls this wrench from all right guys take it easy and peace Hey, sorry my grandpa stole your god and ruined your car. We don't apologize, and we have no god. But this cracked drive shaft brings me great pain. There is no deeper bond than the one between a death stalker and his car. What about the weird guys on leashes, then? They're more like interns. Cool. Cool. Let in job.